over-the-counter sleep aids are destroying your brain. I know that sounds like I'm being a bit extreme, but the science is real. There's some scary data out there about the long-term negative effects over-the-counter sleep aids can have on your cognitive health, especially if you're a senior or headed in that direction. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor. So US News and World Reports just released their second annual best over-the-counter medicine and health products report, which includes a section on over-the-counter sleep aids. The rankings were based on surveys conducted with 354 pharmacists and 122 dermatologists by a polling company called the Harris Poll. Now, I wanna take a note that they did not consult a single sleep doctor when they made this poll. Now listen to this, their top five recommendations for best over-the-counter sleep aids are Unisom, Tylenol PM, Vicks z Somonex, and Nitol. You're probably familiar with all of these brands because they sell all of these in just about every major drugstore there is. They are very common and many people take them sometimes every single night. And it is understandable why you might take an over-the-counter sleep aid. Your doctor may have even told you to go out, buy one, and take it. Trust me, I get it all. We all want to sleep better. However, I'm here to tell you, you should avoid all of these products as best you can because every single one of these products contains an ingredient that can cause long-term damage to your brain. It's called diphenhydramine. Diphenhydramine is an antihistamine, which you may have heard about in products like Benadryl. Histamine, remember, is a natural chemical messenger, or what we call a neurotransmitter, involved in allergic reactions. So when you're exposed to an allergen like pollen or let's say pet dander, your immune system releases histamine, which causes symptoms like swelling, redness, itching, or mucus production. An antihistamine like diphenhydramine works by blocking your histamine receptors, specifically the ones called H1 and H2. So histamine cannot bind to them. This then minimizes those uncomfortable allergy symptoms. Another function of histamine is it regulates our sleep-wake cycle. Remember, histamine is produced by specialized neurons in the hypothalamus. These neurons are part of the ascending arousal system, which helps maintain wakefulness, arousal system. Essentially, it helps keep you awake and focused. At night, your brain stops producing histamine. This drop in histamine levels allows the brain to shift into sleep mode and enter into the deeper stages of sleep. So when you take diphenhydramine, it blocks those H1 histamine receptors, preventing histamine from promoting wakefulness and in turn leading to drowsiness and sedation. That is why when you take Benadryl, you often get drowsy afterwards. That's why diphenhydramine is so common in a lot of over-the-counter sleep aids like z Tylenol PM, and others. And it sounds good, right? I mean, blocking histamine to help you sleep? What could be wrong with that? Unfortunately, that's not the full story and there are very serious potential long-term effects involved. Before I get into all of that, if you're interested in getting better sleep, please do me a favor, subscribe to my channel. I've got a bunch of great content coming out soon that you will not want to miss. And if you're finding this video helpful, please give it a like. Your support allows me to create more content just like this. And while you're at it, if you can, check out my website, sleepdoctor.com. It has tons of sleep content, articles, even a shop. I'll leave the link below in the description. So the problem with diphenhydramine is that it does not just block histamine. It also blocks a brain chemical called acetylcholine. That is why we call diphenhydramine an anticholinergic drug. Acetylcholine is a critical neurotransmitter involved in learning, memory, and cognitive processing. Unfortunately, scientists now believe that anticholinergic drugs like diphenhydramine can lead to dementia. Let me repeat that. By blocking acetylcholine, drugs like diphenhydramine are thought to increase your risk for developing dementia. And there's a growing body of research to support this. Let me tell you about it. Number one, one study published in JAMA, which is the Journal of the American Medical Association, internal medicine examined the long-term use of anticholinergic drugs. They tracked over 3,400 adults age 65 and above for seven years. The study found that those who took strong anticholinergics like diphenhydramine daily for three plus years had a 54% increased risk of developing dementia. 54%. A second study, a meta-analysis from the Cochrane Review Library, 
looked at a group of almost 1 million people, and they found a very similar connection. In addition, the American Journal of Geriatric Psychiatry found that even for those that did not develop dementia, diphenhydramine was still associated with other forms of cognitive impairment. So you might not get dementia, but you might have cognitive decline. Finally, the cognitive side effects can occur even after short-term use. There was a study done at the University Center for Aging Research found that using an anticholinergic for just 60 days can cause memory problems in older adults. By the way, I've included citations for all of this research in the description below, so you can check it all out for yourself. Now, I would also like to note that all of these studies have only found a correlation between diphenhydramine and dementia, but we do not know yet if there is a causative connection. More research is still needed. I don't want you to think that taking one Benadryl to help with occasional seasonal allergies is all of a sudden going to give you Alzheimer's. However, the data that already exists is alarming enough that you should avoid using this as a sleep aid, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. But it is not just for the dementia risk. There are a number of other reasons to avoid diphenhydramine for sleep. For one, it can have a huge hangover effect, causing grogginess and sluggishness the next day. Plus, overuse of diphenhydramine can disrupt your sleep cycles, which can impair your body's ability to get restorative sleep. And if I'm being honest, tolerance can develop very, very quickly, like within a few days. In fact, one study found that after just four days, diphenhydramine performed no better than a placebo for sleep. That means a sugar pill. And I think this is a real trap that people can fall into. They're having trouble sleeping, so they take a Tylenol PM, and maybe it helps them genuinely get a better night's sleep. But the next night they think, hmm, I better take that Tylenol PM again just to make sure that I sleep. And then all of a sudden, it's becoming a daily habit, even though it is probably not actually helping you sleep. Finally, I'd like to note that sleep aids like diphenhydramin can cause sedation, and sedation is not sleep. Remember, being asleep is very different than being sedated. After all, there's the difference between sleeping and passing out or even being anesthetized. Remember, sedation suppresses REM sleep, which is essential for memory and brain health. Remember, sleep is an active process and it's not passive. Even though you're lying there not doing anything, your brain and your body are working hard to restore and revitalize. So a sleep aid may make you feel like you're asleep, but you are not fully benefiting from the restorative properties of sleep. Now, I know that this has been a lot of bad news, especially if you're someone who regularly relies on sleep aids. The good news is you do not need over-the-counter sleep aids. Nine times out of 10, when I have a patient come to me and they tell me they need z or Tylenol PM to fall asleep, it turns out there's something else impacting their sleep. And with a few modifications, we're able to get them better sleep without having to use a sleep aid. So how do you find out what is really impacting your sleep? While sleep is multifactorial and involves a host of physical, psychological, environmental, or behavioral causes, most of the time, I find if someone is relying on over-the-counter sleep aids, they actually have a vitamin or mineral deficiency that could be keeping them awake, especially with seniors. It's very common for us to have deficiencies in some key vitamins and minerals. For example, studies suggest about a third of all seniors are deficient in magnesium, over half are deficient in zinc, and over 60% are deficient in vitamin D. All of these nutrients are vital for good sleep, so it's no surprise many of us seniors are having sleep problems. To learn which vitamin or mineral deficiencies may be impacting your sleep and what to do about it, watch my video on the best sleep supplements for seniors right here. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.